Let's go ahead and get this started. You know, I should really probably figure out if there's a way to auto-admit people. Hey, Justin. Hey, how Yeah, you there's doing? probably a way. Well, yeah, uh, obviously you would assume that there's a way, but um, I'm not finding an easy button. I'm not seeing it either. Mm. Oh, well. No, it's not in the meeting details or settings or anywhere like that. Did I miss accepting somebody? Okay, I'm going to give people another couple of minutes to trickle in, and then we'll get started on today's um, update. I've taken the liberty of actually writing down some notes last time after the difficulty of trying to note, uh, trying to like outline everything that had been done. Uh, most of this is concrete things that we have done rather than speculation, which you can find on the repo. Hey, Justin, just a quick note mm -hmm. here about auto admit. Apparently you have to like directly invite people. Mm -hmm. um, and if anyone joins from the link, then you'll have to admit them. And Unless they have the same domain as you in their email or like uh, in their law. Okay then. So maybe or, moral of the story, maybe don't use Google Meet. <laughs> maybe there's apparently also an extension that'll just auto admit anybody <laughs> as well. A bunch of people. Somebody like, made a browser extension that just hits yes. <laughs> not, not with someone like it looks like a number of them. A number of people made different extensions for it. <laughs> Okay, looks like this is this is it for this morning, or at least it for now. Um, and let's go ahead and sort of go over what we've... Uh, wait, did Ethan make it in here? No, he didn't. I should probably shoot... Oh, no, he did. He did. Um, okay, cool. So, yeah, uh, let's start with our first sort of operational announcements. Um, we have funding provided by UnifyDAO to accelerate PEGI development. Um, and specifically, we are using that to bring on Ethan and Alex from Cosmwasm um, part-time. And if you add up all of the part-times, you get approximately three people uh, now. So that's, 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 that's good, and we're still sort of, um, you know, dealing with the overhead of growing the team. Um, so ultimately, the goal of this extra funding is to... Um, both expand the feature set a little bit uh, with, you know, better support for multiple ERC-20s um, and to try and bring the timeline as far forward as possible. Um, so we're we're going to be trying to do this as fast as reasonably possible while, may, well, you know, writing code that works uh, and, is, um, and is secure because we know that there is huge demand uh, from the entire Cosmos community to sort of have this ready as quickly as possible. Um, so as for what we have done technically, uh, 
in the past two weeks or so. There has been a lot of um, there's there have been a lot of uh, design refinements, and we've uh, set up a repo with all of the sort of um, you know with all the things you would typically expect issues boards uh, you know CI all of that sort of overhead stuff got done. It's at uh, Althea net forward slash Peggy for now um, because I still don't feel comfortable. Um, we're going to have to get the ICF at some point to archive or move. Uh, so, you know, GitHub assumes that you have one repo with one set of issues, which works fine, but now we have sort of two forks. And until we go back and try and integrate some of the more trustless features from, um, from current Peggy Master, uh, it's sort of contradictory working on two different code bases with the same issue set and pull request space, et cetera. It doesn't really work well. Uh, so I think we may want to archive that uh, that repo or rename it at some point so that we don't lose all of the issues and the boards and all of that. Um, but for now, we're on Althea Net Peggy. And I figure I should give all of y'all this slide, uh, this slide set. Let me put chat up here. Here we are. And um, so this has links to the files and such. Um, the big, fairly straightforward thing uh, that we got done was syncing, signing across all of our different platforms here um, because we have Solidity for the Ethereum contract, of course, um, Rust uh, acting as a relayer and the, uh, um, and the, as a relayer and the orchestrator, which we are renaming from Validator Daemon because apparently that caused confusion with a lot of people. Of course, Go for the Cosmos module and JavaScript for the for the for the Solidity tests. Um, yeah, yeah. General housekeeping with UCI. Okay, I think I've hit most everything that I wanted to on this slide. I'm not going to try and bore you to death with PowerPoint here. I just wanted to try and organize my thoughts. Um, so yes, we have. Uh, so we are renaming what was previously called the um, previously called the validator daemon, which is a sort of co-process that all the validators run in Peggy that manages the back and forth between Ethereum and the Cosmos SDK blockchain. Uh, it acts as an oracle for all the validators, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're just going to rename that the orchestrator uh, to try and reduce confusion and uh, make it clear, uh, hopefully make its purpose a little bit more clear. Um, and not sort of exist in the same namespace as the Cosmos SDK daemon, um, which is apparently a confusing issue, although I agree it is a little confusing. Um, so this is, this is sort of the validator set update flow, and uh, what we managed to do is synchronize signing across all of these different applications, which means the orchestrator generates signatures that can be verified in the Cosmos module that can then finally be submitted to the Ethereum contract and it's all the same signatures. Um, I was really hoping to have this flow working end to end with a sort of well, pretty dummy orchestrator that just moves stuff over. It didn't quite end up happening mostly because we were occupied with um, some other design decisions. Um, specifically, we're going to be, uh, so how should I put it? So Peggy has two separate, in, so the Peggy Ethereum contract currently has two endpoints, one to update the validator set and one to submit a transaction batch. And what we've done, or so um, there is no, there was previously no incentivization for submitting transaction batches, um, uh, sorry, for submitting validator set updates. Submitting transaction batches is incentivized by fees that people lock up when they send their transactions over the bridge. Um, and what that means is that theoretically, some, some, somebody, uh, it doesn't have to be a validator, it could be anyone, uh, because moving signed data from Cosmos to Ethereum is trustless. Um, would have to eat the $20 in gas fees every couple of days, or perhaps more if the chain was really going uh, undergoing a lot of governance churn. Um, and that's not really a great situation. 
Um, so after talking to Ethan and Alex and uh, Ethan and Alex and having Jahan draw up a draw up a prototype, we ended up uh, with a combined validator set and transaction batch interface, such that when you submit a transaction batch, it also updates the validator set. This means that you can take the cost of updating the validator set, and it's simply added as overhead to the cost of the transaction batch, which already has an incentivization mechanism, and you're good. Um, even better than that, it's actually cheaper to piggyback it since you can share signatures, and it reduces the marginal cost increase. So this is this is this is a nice design um, change that I'm pretty happy with, but uh, we're 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 still gonna have to get the separate endpoints working first because uh, yeah, these are very big signed messages, and at least for the signature part of all of this, uh, you want to be working with something smaller <laughs> just so that you can figure out where your where your signing is going wrong. Um, yeah, so the last thing I sort of want to touch on before we open this up for actual discussion, questions, and all of that um, is that we are looking for broken net validators for hopefully late September or early October. Um, and our goal, our milestone at that time, is to have a very simple version of a working bridge that can move at least one ERC-20 token back and forth. Uh, between a Cosmos test zone and uh, and the Rinkeby ETH blockchain, um, I think this is this is pretty achievable, especially if we manage to avoid a lot of the edge cases. Uh, but this will be a broken net. We're calling it broken net for a reason. Um, if you're not willing to debug potentially trivial things, you probably shouldn't participate. Um, on the other hand, if you are, it will be helpful and hopefully let us streamline uh, some of the like user interface components. Because obviously, uh, we can do a lot of testing locally, but there are some bugs that you're only going to encounter in test nets. And when your primary goal is speed or to, you, you know to bring timelines as far forward as possible, it's better to try and encounter those earlier rather than later. So yeah, that is the really sort of simple update. Uh, I think Ethan is here and wants to talk about a few things. Um, and then I guess we can open up for questions. Well, I mean, people are free to ask questions at any time. Ethan? Ah, okay, I was waiting for you to unmute it. It auto muted me. Ah, oh, um, I'm sorry, is everybody else auto muted? Do I need to unmute people? Yeah. No, maybe they can self unmute. Okay, I was just auto mute. They're just auto yes. okay. <laughs> I thought it said you are muted. Um, anyway, uh, hello. Yeah, it's cool working with this stuff. Lots of lots of design stuff going on. Trying to clarify it. Um, it's a very nice design before, and so a lot of what I did was try to you know write down a lot what's in Justin and uh, and Johan's head, and Johan's head, um, and so you know Alex and I could start for, uh, committing to it. So a lot of this speed up is really uh, you know getting. Up to speed, getting the validators on board is you know getting all this stuff written down and coordinating us good. One of the main questions that came up public channels is what the security level is. And you know, IBC companies to IBC. Um, so I did some writing on it. It's in a design spec now, and that's some more. But I just want to say that like I think the design is basically as secure as an IBC channel would be. Think about that, compare it, right? So an IBC channel between Ethereum, if it existed, right? And, uh, you know, and this would basically be as, you know, secure as, you know, uh, either owning two thirds of the validator set of the uh, Peggy chain or uh, 50, be able to change, revert 50 blocks on Ethereum chain. Uh, so we say, and we assume that reverting 50 blocks on Ethereum chain is really, really hard. We assume that. So we say, well, the lower, uh, lower bound is if we, as long as you maintain that you need two thirds of the validator set of the Peggy chain to do anything dishonest, then we have that level of security. And what we end up doing is defining a bunch of stuff in the spec, you can read it, but uh, instead of having a full Ethereum like client, basically it's two thirds of the validator set is, um, of the chain is validating, is acting as a light client. And again, two thirds of the validator set of the chain is acting as a light client from Cosmos Ethereum. So in any case, all the places where you need a light client and proof of the chain, we have basically tied it to two thirds of the validator set of the Peggy chain. 
which was of lowest uh, security level we had from IBC, we have IBP anyway. And um, they're adding, it's, you know, looking to add slashing conditions on any misbehavior of those as well. So this should basically argue, uh, that's a design, it's more details in the design doc, but I think we went through this whole discussion and the whole thing will basically have that you need two thirds of the validating power of the Peggy chain to do a slashable offense to be able to uh, double spend here. So that was a very nice uh, overview of this stuff and going through it, and that's the question that came up. So I think it's actually a very, very nice design, how they came up with it, and it was nice to go through all the details. Yeah, I mean, essentially, we just sort of farmed out the light clients to Ethereum full nodes, and then all of the validators run Ethereum full nodes, and then they can observe proofs exactly like it was a light client, just because they see it themselves instead of any sort of cryptographic proof. Um, then after that, it's all key management and a few different signatures. Um, but considering how much trouble it was just to get the same signatures to verify, you know, across the entire stack of platforms, I'm very happy we're not trying to do a light client built into the Cosmos chain mm. itself. It would have been an enormous pain. Yeah, and it wouldn't have given me any security improvement anyway. Yes. <laughs> just more just more headaches. <laughs> just more days banging your head against the wall. Um, Anyways, long story short, synchronizing signing in Go Ethereum is the most infuriating thing you will ever attempt to do in your life. Um, anyway, uh, just um, their abstraction interface is not the best. Um, so yeah, I think that covers what we're working on immediately. Um, I, I, I'm trying to sort of balance uh, additional documentation with uh, with uh, continuing to make progress on the core 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 code base as quickly as possible um, so yeah I am I am hoping that by the end of this week or hell tomorrow or the next day um, I will will finally have some data being signed and sent all the way from Ethereum to, well, no, from Cosmos to Ethereum in our little testnet environment. And then, you know, after that, we'll be refining a lot of these workflows and handling a lot of edge cases. Um, but for the most part, the really hard uh, underlying, how should I put it? So the cryptography infrastructure is all there now. So that's really good. Um, Cause that means that we don't have to worry about signatures too much, except in terms of getting the data in place. Um, we figured out the incentive structure for the contract, which is good because it means we know um, we don't need to worry about uh, we don't need to worry about who's going to pay for validator set updates. Um, yeah, we really just need to get a lot of the really nitty details, um, which is obviously why Ethan, uh, Ethan and Alex and uh, Jahan have been focusing a lot on documentation. Um, and that, yeah, so once we get those really nitty details down, like who exactly signs off for every message in any given block and how exactly a transaction batch is submitted, uh, then we're pretty much ready uh, to go to our, uh, to our broken net at least, where we will inevitably find a huge, hugely larger number of issues. Um, it, is, it is my sincere goal to have this ready for a all up test net with multiple ERC twenties in the November timeframe. Um, so that's, you know, sort of November, December. Uh, and, uh, I think that that will be a real incredible achievement if we manage to get that. Uh, but I also think that it's very doable given the design and the resources currently available to us. Um, so yeah, are there any other questions, any interest in getting involved? Um, any, uh, because if anyone wants to tackle an issue or anything like that, I would be happy uh, to pull you into the channel and, you know, outline how to go about stuff. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just missed what the, the last part of what you said about the timeline. You said November, December for which? Uh, for a testnet implementation. So an implementation that is theoretically ready to run in production where we, you know, testnet it. Uh, sorry. So I should make that clear. Um, I'm thinking hopefully an incentivized testnet. Um, we'll see if we can get the money for that. But uh, that's sort of my point. I would like to do uh, in November a testnet 
that is that you know could potentially be incentivized which is essentially finalizing the software and getting it ready to ship or go and be audited and potentially have a few more changes um and then after that it's up to uh zones to um it's up to zones to adopt it as they will um we althea do intend to launch our althea blockchain in roughly that time frame um, if at all possible, uh, you know, provided that the testnet is, um, is successful and reveals no critical flaws, which we don't expect, uh, we would like to move forward with launching our chain as quickly as possible. Um, and uh, I think I've noted this, this before, we really do want to see Peggy on the hub, but we're also going to launch our own chain with Peggy just to kind of uh, take more control of the timeline. Um, even though Peggy on the Hub would ultimately be better for us from a fees perspective. I, uh, I think, Ethan, um, you're also interested in launching a zone running, Peggy, or is it just your own zone, or I'm missing yeah, all the we'll, details we'll, there? Oh, uh, we're planning to integrate tar tar Tardigrade, and we'd um, launch with Peggy as well. We'd like to integrate that in there as well. Um, time frame is Q1 sometime, so you'd probably have yours out first. Mm -hmm. uh, but we want to have it so we have access directly between, you know, uh, DeFi contracts in Cosmosm and DeFi contracts in Ethereum and have the first path there. I'm not sure when IBC is ready, so we're just going to have that there. But I'm happy to, you know, if there's a big, big bandwidth in the hub, I'm happy later. But we'll probably have our testnet as well. We'll be doing testnets also in Q4 um, and happy to try out a testnet there as well. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have a few different testnets banging in this and see how they work, especially if they have IBC going. <laughs> yeah, um, that's going to be fun, I'm sure. <laughs> Well, cool. Uh, if there aren't any other questions, then I guess I'll go ahead and I'll let everybody go early. Um, and then we can, yeah. Um, and then I look forward to seeing you all in the next couple of weeks where we'll hopefully have more of a like uh, semi-working demo or semi-working test for everyone to play around with. And of course, once that's ready, I'll be putting out a blog post about it too. Okay, thank you, everybody. Mm, Gavin. Oh, I was just gonna say it's really exciting. Thanks for thanks for hosting us. Hmm. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, it'll be up on YouTube in a few minutes, anyways. Uh, so talk to all talk to all of y'all later, and I hope you have a nice day. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs>